So I've come out to Sonche again, and this time I'm, I've come to try out the Flames Creed Shungshang. I don't speak Chinese, but I think that's how you say it, Shungshang. Uh, is it a tarp or is it a tent? That is the question. Is it a hybrid? Anyway, I'm looking forward to trying it. It uh, seems like a, a great design to me. I have the, the Langshan One, which I like. It is a beautiful little tent, but I do find it awkward getting in and out uh, from the inner. So we'll see if this one better for me. And the other thing about it, apart from being very light, it uh, has a lot of space about it. So I'm, yeah, it's going to pitch up over there. Give it a try. Bit. This is the the Flames Creed Shungshang. Now I haven't got scales, but that is comparable in weight. Uh, it's about the same as the Lanshan one that I have. The only difference is that this has got two poles, or it needs two walking poles, or a stick and a walking pole uh, to put it up. Um, I'm going to get on and do this because it actually looks like it's going to rain. We've been desperate for rain for two weeks. Everything's drying out so much. So uh, I might be able to give it a right proper test as well if it's raining hard. So it's a inner and outer, eight pegs, and there is a doorway that goes on the on the front. I have a ground sheet, just a plastic ground sheet. Uh, you know, these lightweight tents are for quite flimsy uh, ground sheets, so I'll just use a little bit of extra just in case. Slightly windy, but I've already got my shelter, even if it rains now. So I can't complain about that. And it is about to bucket it down. It's actually just in time. It, it's, it's not pouring it down, but it's definitely about to start. There's a little bit of a breeze. So uh, I've got this other doorway to put in, which I might put on just this side here, leaving the other side open, and I'll I'll get the inner up. Um, yeah, once I've probably have done that. Because it's so dry, there actually isn't much grass uh, around this porch entrance, so I'm gonna be, to be a little bit careful about getting too much soil and dirt coming into the tent. But so far, that pitched pretty nicely. A little snap put here. One up at the top, and then it goes out to the guy line. All right, there we go. So that's the, the clip up at the top there. Got another one down here. And then ties off at the front, and then if you really want to close it off, then you can clip it over there as well. But what that makes is this quite big porch area. Great for, well, certainly cook here with care. Um, probably not what I want to cook tonight. And but yeah, for getting the gear out of the way, absolutely fine. So, so far. Excellent. So, got an elastic here. That has to go into this point here. Which means lifting the peg out, actually. I think. I think. I'll slip that through. And then, oh yeah, that's it. And then it just catches on there. 
So what I've noticed is that this material here, I think that's probably a factory error. I'm sure that should be on the inside. That sort of material, certainly on the inside on the the uh, additional doorway. Now whether that's going to cause a problem, I don't know. It's away from the, the inner at least. Um, and maybe with silicon, because it isn't, hasn't got any silicon sealing on, maybe it won't be a problem. There we go. Now, here it is. That's a fabulous looking tent. I love that extra doorway. It's a mesh inner, and we've got all this space down there for storing some of the cooking gear um, that's neat reminds me a lot of the Tinker which was the first tent that I went camping in a Black's Tinker I hope my dad still got it old canvas cotton tent which I'd love to get out one day just for old times sake ways Ten times more than this thing. <laughs> Superb. Right, going to start cooking. Today I'm going to make a, a Peruvian classic called Tallarín con saltado con pollo, or de pollo, which is basically stir-fried noodles with, ch uh, with chicken. So I've got the pasta water already on, just the one tomato and some pepper, onion, chicken of course, which I'll put over there, yellow chilli and then some sauce and things, a bit of oil, for stir frying. Now the middle bit of the onion. That goes in later on. long cut. And this one you peel peel the tomato and you also don't want the seeds in this one. You just want the outer bit. And then I cut these long as well. Not too thin. Go in at the very end. And I like the pepper. Mmm, oh. nice pepper. So I've already diced the chicken before coming out. I don't want to scorch it just a little bit. That's it. Onions and a, a little bit of yellow chilli. Get that frying. Get 
going to put in a bit of ostion and the soy sauce. We can't get hold of the light soy sauce, which would be ideal. And just a splash of vinegar. Heat that through just a little bit further. And I'm going to put the pasta in. Use my fingers. Oh, I've got way too much pasta, as expected. I'll get rid of that bit. We've got a tree trunk of pasta there. <laughs> and the final touch is the onions that aren't cooked the tomato and I'll do the pepper as well. Let's get those tomatoes and slightly warm through. The rest of the onions give it a little bit of a crunch about it. Don't want it to cook too much. Then that is job done. So, oh. this is one of the dishes where obviously there was a Chinese influence. Um, the Chinese were brought into Peru in 1850s to work in the rice paddies, and with that, they brought their own cuisine, of course. And now there's a, been a fusion of Peruvian cuisine with um, Chinese. That is lovely. That is absolutely lovely. Big mixture of flavours. A bit of chilli. The tomato. The bite of the onion. The edge of the onion. The sharpness of the onion. Mmm. So you may notice that I'm trying out a, a microphone here as well. It's a, a wireless mic to see if that can help cut away the river noise, which you might be able to hear in the background. Because I realised on the last couple of videos I've done that the, the river noise has been really high uh, with a shotgun mic. But it might not be the best for what I'm eating. <laughs> You're hearing every munch. That is delicious. I wasn't feeling that hungry until like <clears throat> the onion and the chilli started cooking with the, the chicken. Great. I'm going to finish it and that is enough of me eating and maybe you hearing every munch. So it started to rain and uh, the, uh, there's quite a, a big cloud build up now. So we might be on for a good, good downpour. Like I say, we're looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, test this tent out. I'm so happy I was able to eat in the dry and not try and cook underneath here. It would have been the easiest thing to cook. And I uh, had a cup of tea before sort of getting in. So, tarp or tent? <laughs> it's a tarp at the start. And then it's got this inner and it becomes this fantastic, useful tent. But the test is in the rain. Let's see if I remain dry. I've had to slacken it off here just a little bit uh, up on the roof. Because um, I was worried about that the inner was actually touching the top. I'm not sure why that is. It might be. I haven't got the pitching quite right. Um, or maybe I've got it too tight at the upper end. Anyway, it's not touching now, so I think we'll be okay. Good morning. It's raining. 
Uh, we've had rain most of the night. Not hard rain, but good rain. Good rain. It's going to get these plants growing again. Uh, so, um, attachment of the inner that's that's leaked through, but it's because it needs silicon on there. So I just got a little bit damp. I didn't realise until I put the the sleeping bag away. But weirdly, it doesn't seem to be doing it on on this front attachment. It's all in all very good. Time to make some a little bit of breakfast. I'm not going to be doing anything special today. So to sum up the uh, Flames Creed Shengsheng, what I don't like about it is these tie-up points. I think they are definitely the wrong way round. The access isn't brilliant, um, or getting out in the morning, but particularly. But that's as much as anything, just because it's, you know, it's a tiny tent. What I do love about it, the space. The space is fantastic. The lots of space around the signs, keeping gear dry, um, which particularly useful for me because I'm not the necessarily the tidiest person. The porch area, which you can close off, is just brilliant. Though it'd be cool if it had a little tie out there, so you could then. You see, I've just got it sort of dragged over. Once you're inside, it's, it's fantastic. It's 220, 220 centimetres long and 100 tall, 110, 120, sorry, at the shoulders. So you've got lots of space. This weighing 880 grams, which is 50 grams less than the Lanshan one. I don't know how that happens because this tent looks bigger, but well, it seems bigger on the inside anyway. Uh, obviously there's a way of, you could pull these tie-up points down further to the ground and then it would be more closed off to the elements. I left it high up um, by, I left things high up because uh, I didn't think about putting it lower down. Uh, so yeah, I had a nice airy night. It's had a bit of a test in this weather. You can probably see it's raining. Um, look forward to using it on another adventure. Let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you again soon.